In Tunisia in the spring, thousands of quails migrating from Africa to Europe rest at Cape Bon before crossing the sea. Man noticed that a small bird of prey called the sparrowhawk followed the same route, but two weeks before the quails. The Tunisians developed the necessary skills to capture, tame and train the sparrowhawk in this short period of time to hunt the quails in the few days they remained there. Afterwards, maintaining the tradition, the sparrowhawks are once again released. Her son is restless. For some days now, he has been carefully observing the sky. He senses that the first sparrowhawks are about to arrive. He knows that when they arrive, they will look for a patch of forest in which to rest, remaining hidden during their stay. Watching carefully for any sign that reveals their presence, his wait finally comes to an end. One has arrived. Its camouflage plumage concealed it among the vegetation. The small bird of prey is specialized in the capture of birds, as can be seen from its long, thin toes. Other evolutionary adaptations include a long tail which serves as a rudder and short wings which enable it to fly through the very heart of the forest. Life goes on much as normal in the fields of El Awaria. As the usual tasks of sowing continue, nothing would seem to indicate that one man is about to fulfill a dream that has been with him all year long. Taking the basket out of the storeroom, Hassan starts to prepare the things he will need for his trap. Wissam! Wissam! Aisha! Unaware that the call contains centuries of tradition of his people, Yisem approaches in response to his grandfather's voice. Hello, how you going? Over there. No. Magroom, b'sef, or l'ele. The bundles of nets still rolled up will be the resource used to try to capture the spirit of the forest. Several nets will be necessary to cover all the gaps through which it could enter the dense vegetation. Without forgetting to put the rope in the basket, grandfather and grandson set out towards the chosen place. They know precisely where they will try to trap the sparrowhawk. In fact, each grove has corresponded to the same family for generations. The ideal surroundings is a clear place such as the cultivated fields in which there is a small wood. The forest is the sparrowhawk's natural habitat and it will be immediately attracted towards it. The place must be easily observable from the distance. It is important to stand careful and failing watch in order to act immediately if a sparrowhawk appears. Followed by his grandson, Hassan gathers branches from the bushes in the surrounding area. Yusem actively participates in the search, enthused with their small adventure. The rope that will hold the net is hidden by the branches. With rudimentary but effective techniques, the result of centuries of application, the installation is prepared. In just a few minutes, what had previously been an unremarkable spot now has many possibilities of becoming the setting for a dream converted into reality. The meeting of this man with the spirit of the forest.
Each one of the movements of his skillful hands makes it clear that this is not the first time he has carried out this task. With surprising precision, Hassan prepares the installation with inventive, simple resources. Once again with ingenuity, simple means are used to achieve something extremely difficult. In the region of Cape Bon, there is a long tradition of trapping sparrowhawks. The environmental agency knows of the custom of these falconers of releasing the sparrowhawks a few weeks later. In collaboration with the Falconers Association of the region, this state service places scientific rings on them. If a sparrowhawk is again captured at some other time or place, interesting information on the migratory routes, age and habits of the species will be obtained. Hassan continues to hang and stretch out the net. It must be sufficiently tense to go unnoticed, but loose enough to entangle the sparrowhawk when it crashes into it. Satisfied that the preparations are completed, Hassan and his grandson leave the place to go and hide in their lookout post. They have left virtually no evidence that they have been here. The net sways in the breeze. From just a few meters away, it is virtually impossible to detect it. Having withdrawn to a prudential okay, distance, they pass the hours observing the flight of different birds of prey as they glide, sustained by the warm air of the thermal currents. Many years observing the birds have made these falconers expert field ornithologists. With the intuition that comes from experience, Hassan stands up to go and check the net. A sparrowhawk has been caught up in the net. They must get to it before the animal becomes stressed or damages its plumage. With the greatest care and agility, Hassan disentangles his precious treasure. The sparrowhawk is immobilized in a simple but effective bundle which facilitates transportation without damaging the plumage. Their patience has been rewarded and they are happy as they set off to return home. First of all, Hassan puts the jesses on the sparrowhawk. These are two small straps attached to the legs to facilitate handling. The sparrowhawk is the most delicate bird of prey used in falconry. The fact that it is small, has a very rapid metabolism and a nervous character mean it should only be trained by patient, experienced falconers. Gisem is also rapidly succumbing to the annual dream of his grandfather.
Pensively, Hassan recalls very similar scenes in former times, when he was a child, and his father, the falconer. As in any Mediterranean village, the inhabitants of El Awaria love being out in the street. The hustle and bustle is a good way to break in the birds of prey. Gradually introducing them into noisy atmospheres with a lot of movement prepares them and gets them used to being in the presence of humans. A cafe is a good place to begin this process. The falconry with sparrowhawks practiced in Tunisia has a number of peculiar characteristics. The breaking in has a fixed time limit. It must be achieved quickly because they have barely two weeks between the time the bird is trapped and the arrival of the quail. In addition, they only keep the sparrowhawk during the days of hunting, it then being set free again. One curious aspect is that they do not use a glove in the training. They understand that the claws of the sparrowhawk do not make its use vital, and what is more, they prefer to transport it in the hollow of the hand. When they go out to hunt, they tie a bright wooden string to it. In the first flights, this will make it possible to locate it and recover it if it gets frightened. When launching the sparrowhawk in pursuit of the quail, they fling it as if it were an enormous dart. Once it remains calm in the presence of humans, the time has come to continue training out in the open countryside. They are rapidly introduced to hunting. After all, they are individuals that have already had to fend for themselves. The difficulty lies in being able to sufficiently train them against the clock to make it possible to hunt with them. Conserving a certain degree of the sparrowhawk's unsociable nature will favor its subsequent reintroduction into the wild. Hassan sharpens its hunting instinct by launching it time and time again towards a dead prey. Little by little he gains its confidence, so it'll even eat from his hand. In these sessions he also calibrates just how willing it is to allow him to approach to take the prey. Their time is almost up and so Hassan decides to move on to real hunting. Thousands of quail cross the strait during the night, heading for Europe, but others remain here for a day or two in the lands of Cape Bon, waiting for the best moment to continue their journey. Hassan, with the sparrowhawk ready, and with the aid of a stick, slowly walks around the fields. The density of quail is such that he does not require the collaboration of a dog. Simply by walking around, he will sooner or later flush one out. Hoping to remain unnoticed thanks to their immobility and camouflage plumage, some stoically refuse to react to the proximity of the new arrival. Until the walker comes too close and they decide to take flight. Like other small birds of prey, the sparrowhawk carries its prey off to hide it from possible dangers. Hassan soon locates it thanks to the red wooden string. Once he has put the precious quail away, he holds the ball of wool in the hollow of his hand 
and again sets off to hunt down another quail. In the course of a day, it can make dozens of flights. But not every attempt ends in success, as falconers throughout the world well know. 